He is unassuming, methodical, experienced. Raise it to 1.6 million. Yet despite his achievements, a deep run at the main event eluded him. Until now. For German pro Karai Aldemir, the bracelet is more than within reach. It's practically on his wrist. Yes, there are roadblocks. Players with big stacks. Players with talent. But they're not Karai Aldemir. Aldemir won't bring an ego or bravado or entitlement. Tonight, he'll bring the chip lead and a skill set worthy of a champion. It's his main event final table to win. Nine bucket list, nine newly added check marks. The World Series of Poker main event, final table. Hi everyone, Lon McCarron along with Norman Chad as we get ready for the latest episode of The World according to Karai Aldemir. 35% of the chips in play, a skill set unrivaled at this final table, and maybe the best eyebrows in World Series history. Don't blow this, Karai. Trying to stop Karai, George Holmes, the 49-year-old recreational player from Atlanta. George was down to one big blind, and now he's here. This is as improbable as you still being my partner. <laughs> a gaggle of others, including pro Jarrett East, will try to run down Aldemir and Holmes, but the task is tall. Not as tall as me, but not as short as you, Norman. Uh, this is a great final nine. It's not a table full of hoodies and sunglasses. There's a nice blend of personality and prowess. Some might say they take after me. The chip counts brought to you by Caesar's Sportsbook. Aldemir and Holmes, the big stacks, but Alejandro Lococo and Josh Remedio are a double up away from serious contention. Let's send it down to Caesar's executive, Jack Ethel, who's with our new poker ambassador. We have a special guest with us here today. He is a poker enthusiast, and now he is also going to be the 2022 Master of Ceremonies. Please give a warm WSOP welcome than none other than Mr. Vince Vaughn. Thank you, my friend. Great to be here with everybody. Been an exciting tournament so far this year, and a really exciting field of players here left, so I'm excited to get into it. How about you? We're excited. All right. Well, without any further ado, let's shuffle up and deal. All right, Vince, welcome to the family. Thanks very much. Here are the final nine payouts brought to you by Cuervo. There are no strangers. A million guaranteed to all, eight million to the new champion. Oh, kind of. <laughs> no matter what these players have been through in the long days leading up to this final table, this moment, unlike any other, They've watched it on TV, read about it, dreamed of it, and suddenly here they are. Jack Oliver, the youngest here at this final table at age 26. George Holmes, the oldest at 49. All right, guys, don't do anything dumb, okay? Don't screw it up. We got this far. <laughs> you, you too, Chase, mate. We know you. Bolted to Josh Remedio, 27-year-old Vegas resident, Arizona State Sun Devil at heart. He's going to raise it up. Henry Park on the button, former chip leader in this tournament. East gives way. Aldemir, the big blind, the big stack. All right, you win the first one. And there you go. And a lively railbird section behind Josh. That was like wave counts. Yes. Right? <laughs> you Massive pop, baby. It's so hard. <laughs> Oh, I'm so good. I'm going pro. I hope I get one at the final table. You know? Not just bust the first time I play. <laughs> at the main event, the chip lead doesn't always pan out. Sure, more chips always better, but it's not easy to keep them. The day two, three, four, and five chip leaders did not make this final table, but Aldemir used his big stack to plow through the field and start tonight in prime position. Norman, what is your chip leading experience? You know, you might have a future in stand-up lawn. As in stand-up and leave. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Can I use that? Well, sometimes uh, you get a feeling out period at a final table. There's Bianchi with ace four, 34-year-old. 
Only bracelet winner at this final table. He's going to raise it up. The foster dad slash fledgling software engineer with just 15 bigs left. I'm kind of surprised he didn't shove there. Jareth East with a short stack gives way. As does Aldemir to Jack Oliver with a dream peak of aces. 12.1 to start. 12.1. Thank you. Oliver thinking I don't care about the point one, but I'd love to get that 12 million. Oliver starting this final table in the middle of the chip pack. Three bet in progress. Oliver makes it 4.1. What a. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver takes it down. Oliver, like Josh Remedio, here at the final table in his first main event ever. Can you just give me one pot? Come on. Bianchi told us in high school he did field studies and bad decisions. That, however, a good right, decision right. to save his main event life, perhaps. Well, Jack Oliver is one other player at this final table who was once really short stacked. But he has battled back, giving himself a chance at becoming this year's world champion. I've run insane. I've just had hands repeatedly. I I'm not going to deny it. Any tournament, you're never going to make it this far unless you have hands. I remember watching when I was 17. I couldn't legally play, and I remember watching the main event. I used to watch the reruns repeatedly of, of it, and uh, used to think you learned something from it, and the plays were insane then. It was like six bet jamming, jet five off or something. But, but it was, yeah, it was, it was insane. And I, here we are now. I'm, I'm trying not to get excited. I'm purposely not getting excited, because if you get excited, you probably won't play as well. So I'm just, I've got a very tough table, and just trying to stay in the moment and play the cards I'm dealt, really. It's challenging, but that's poker. Like, it's what we play for. Entertainment and challenge. Oliver studied business management at the University of Kent, but quickly became part of the Kent Poker Society, which I assume was not covered in any of his business management courses. <laughs> Folded to Jack in the cutoff. The seat just to the right of the button. Ace King. And a raise to 1.6 million. On to the small blind. George Holmes, second biggest stack at the table. Holmes, part of the Atlanta Home Game Poker Society. There are some highfalutin poker societies in Atlanta. He's committed the small blind. He calls for a million two more. Bianchi now, the second short stack in the big blind. Two picture cards. I was waiting for that. I know. <laughs> I was waiting. <laughs> Your name's Rabbit? I was waiting you. Rabbit, I raise. Rabbit, I'm all in. <laughs> Rabbit Chase Bianchi is about to be all out. <laughs> Back to Oliver, the original razor with Ace King. All in. And Sphinx like Oliver moves all in himself. Holmes gets rid of it. Chase Bianchi at risk and way behind right out of the gate. Yeah, Bianchi in very bad shape to stay alive. And the shorter stack, Jareth East, happy about this. He perhaps can ladder up one spot. I had a king. As long as you didn't have a queen, I think yeah. that's good. Jack Oliver favored to notch the first elimination of this final table. Oliver still good. Bianchi tweeted this morning, just got a text from my landlord about discussing rent price well, after our lease is up. So I think his landlord is also rooting for a queen here. <laughs> Turn card. Ten of diamonds. It will come down to the river for Chase Bianchi's tournament life. Only one card saves Bianchi's main event. He's got to have a queen. It's a jack and Bianchi comes up short. But yeah, you walk away with a million, and you just don't feel good. You won a World Series bracelet in 2016, but a made of it bracelet is not to be. For Chase Bianchi, ninth place finisher.
A good beginning for Jack Oliver. His stack rises to 44 million. Good for third place right now. Chase Bianchi knocked out by Britt Jack Oliver won't be able to retire off his ninth place finish. So the software engineer officially looking for work. His devotion to foster care is an inspiration and we wish him luck. Back to action, eight handed now. And seat one, the other Brit here, Jareth East. East says he photoshopped his face onto the photo of a previous main event champion and it's been working pretty well for him luck wise. <laughs> I like it. All right, well, he's going to need a little luck here. Ace Jack all in. 6.3 million up for grabs. Uzger Sechilmish from Turkey. Ace nine of hearts. Not now. Now George Holmes peeks at two queens. All in. And he's going to clear the decks and take on East on his own. Showdown. There you go. So when back-to-back -back hands, we could have our first two knockouts. Now, now he's all in. Let's go, George, show the lights, baby! Let's go! I got queens. I need, I need an ace. Let's go, George! I need an ace. Let's go, baby, let's go! I need an ace. Show the lights, baby! Let's go, George! Our Mensa guy's been pretty short for a long time, but we heard him tell us rare on day seven that he's been winning every all-in. Here we go. And a queen in the window as East catches his ace to no avail. Well, it doesn't look like East is going to win this all-in. Home game, Holmes, a huge favorite. East is so in the moment he doesn't realize his sunglasses are halfway down. Or maybe he does and is making a fashion statement. Turn card, the four, and East is done. Get in there. Team Holmes keeping it rolling. Jareth East says his goodbyes to those he will never forget. 1,100,000 for eighth place. 10 online World Series caches in 2020, nine more in 2021, and now a second main event cache. Well done, Jareth East. For more on Holmes Rail, let's get it down to Jeff Platt. You might have heard the rail of George Holmes yelling, show him the lights, one or two times. Maybe one or two hundred times. His crew brought that phrase over from wrestling to poker. Holmes, the former high school wrestler in Georgia. And if he could show his opponent the lights, that'd be a good thing. That means he had his opponent pinned and his opponent would be looking up at the ceiling lights. Holmes says he doesn't feel any pressure at the final table of the World Series of Poker main event. So the bright lights of this stage aren't getting to him at all. George's crew jokingly wonders how he can be this good at poker because at their home game, he sits on his phone and plays Sudoku most of the time. <laughs> well, several players have told me that the exhortations they hear from their rail is a good thing, keeps them grounded and loose as they sit under the glare of the poker world. Folded to our chip leader, Karai Aldemir, ace tray. Looks like he wants to get involved. There's a raise to 1.7 million. 31-year-old German raised pro now living in Austria, a country that does not tax his residents on gaming income. Good thing for him. Alejandro Lococo, the Argentinian rapper, ace king of the big blind. Papo MC, rap freestylist, rap battler, relative poker newbie. Started pivoting to more poker a couple of years ago. Has one World Series cash to his credit in 2019. Presently in third place with almost 49 million to start the hand. He just calls for 900K more. Aldemir's got to be feeling antsy. He hasn't knocked out anybody yet today. <laughs> right. Now there's a gut shot for Aldemir. With Lococo still with the best hand. He checks. Aldemir had a slow start to this main event, but it's been a magic carpet ride for him down the stretch. Chip leader. At the beginning of day six, chip leader since we had 20 players left, he checks back. Let me see, please. I don't like when you re-peek at your hand, but you do not have to ask permission. Anyway, if Lococo had three bet pre-flop, the hand might be over. Now he's got to navigate out of position against Aldemir. But I'll say this, you know, it's just seeing Lococo and, and George Holmes at this final table should give hope to all rec players. You need some skill to get here, but you don't have to be a world beater. 2.7 million now from Lococo. Is it too late? As you said, maybe an earlier raise ends this hand. 
Aldemir with just enough to stick around. You know, ace high might be good. If he hits his flush or his straight, that could be good. Yeah, Aldemir with the spade, but it is lacking as you see. Yellow chips worth a million each. The Lavender, 100K each. There's a call. Popo MC closing his eyes so he does not see the river. Ten of hearts, so ace king. The best hand here. Well, when Lococo opens his eyes, he'll see he missed. Aldemir already sees that he missed. I imagine we'll just see check check here. Both hoping the ace is good at showdown. If he's going to check, it's not coming quickly. Hmm. He's a rapper. He knows how to freestyle. He bets nine million. Nine million? I, I guess he's bluffing with the best hand. Aldemir with a couple of draws that have gone unrequited, and he gives it up. Everybody. He's got a rail here in Vegas, but a whole lot more people rooting for Lococo down in South America tonight. He celebrates a win on the heels of two early eliminations. Chase Bianchi out at ninth, and Jared East, the short stack to start the final table, out in eighth. Back to the Rio right after this. There is no poker destination like it. The final table at the main event, eight million up top. The gold bracelet and waiting a world champion among our final seven. Three of them saw a turn card that paired the board as we pick up this hand in progress. Osger say Chilmish on the left edge of your screen leads with ace high. Holmes has the action with king 10. Nobody has anything, Lon. I noticed it first during the commercial break. That you did, Norman, and we are blessed to have you. Holmes. Holmes out of position, but he's got a big stack, and Sachilmish has a small stack. And Sachilmish has to wonder, if I call here, will I call the river if another blank hits? Saw Remedio fold. Sachilmish puts in his own 1.7 million. River card now, heads up. Eight of clubs. No, nobody still has anything, Lon. I noticed it first. That you did, Norman, and as I mentioned earlier, we are blessed. Say uh -huh. Chilmish and his nothing better than Holmes and his nothing here. But here comes George again, 7.2 million. And Osger doesn't look convinced here. Hmm, I would be impressed if he found a Turkish coffee here at the Rio. Holmes has bet about 40% of Sachilmish's remaining stack. I like it on his part. Home game my butt. Holmes is a closet pro, I tell you, who probably wears a <laughs> disguise to all the 100K high rollers. A cardinal moment for, say, Chilmish with that bet sizing. I'm there. I shouldn't call, but I cannot resist myself. <laughs> I cannot stop myself. Cool. You're good. Great instincts from the 37-year-old Istanbul resident. Mm -hmm. King 10. King 10. King 10. King 10. <laughs> Say Chomish with more than 33 million now. Yeah, that was good on his part. If he was wrong there, he'd be left with 12 bigs. Well, every year we like to have a little fun with potential front page headlines for a new champ. Bianchi and East ah, in the recycling bin. I'm a bit partial to you call, it's Oliver, baby. Thank you to our producer, Zach Ralston, for that one. Yeah, I'm a newspaper guy, born and bred. I wouldn't take any of these to my copy editor. He'd throw me into the trash, and I would take Zach Ralston with me. <laughs> Get that paper, 16. Chase. Ah! Folded to Holmes in the cutoff, ace five of diamonds. He's going to raise to 1.6 million. 
Holmes has a lot of Atlanta home game buddies here on his rail, but you'd think he has only one. Gordon, show him the lights, Davis. That man is going to need an ear, nose, and throat doctor when this is done. Popo MC has a rail here. How are they not battle rapping with Gordon Davis? Exactly. Folded to Park in the big blind. Jack, nine. He was the chip leader to begin day seven with 29 million. He's been pretty card dead down the stretch. He started playing poker on a Navy ship when he was in the Marines. And it's a lot easier here to play poker because those tables don't bob up and down there in the Rio. Yeah. All right. Park's going to come along. Here is the flop. Top pair for Henry. Two more diamonds for George. Boy, Lionel, when we have a flop like this, I, I always want to edge closer to the table. D do you mind if I leave the booth? Uh, no, not at all. I don't like the way you said that. I'm going to stay. Park checked. Holmes rarely checks. Well, Park now under 20 bigs. With that flop, he's going to get it all in the middle now. Look at this. this is King George versus O. Henry. <laughs> there oh. I, I said it. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get it all into the middle now. Henry Park. It's a check raise, but he does not get it all in the middle now. What, suddenly I'm a poker expert? <laughs> Leave me be. Check raise to five million. Well, Holmes isn't going anywhere because there's nowhere to go. We've seen George, and he loves to turn up the heat. All in. Yeah, he's testing Park for it all. And Henry calls and hangs his championship hopes on a pair of nines. Holmes in search of help still. Jack nine. Jack nine. Diamonds. Let's go. No diamonds. Jack nine. No, one diamond. One diamond. I believe Gordon Davis needs to remove his mask to be heard. Puck, meanwhile, has a more reserved, normal rail. George Holmes trying to hit a card and get us one player shorter. A couple of more winning cards onto Holmes' ledger. An ace, five, or diamond would knock out Henry Park. But it's the three of spades, and Holmes does not get the knockout. Henry Park keeps his seat. The first man bun champion is still a possibility. Technically, I think it's a top knot, but we're splitting hairs. Henry survives the charge by Holmes, and now Park sits with over 33 million. A look at the championship bracelet and the solve for wide tournament summary. Two eliminations thus far, bringing our final table down to seven players. Eight million awaits our champion, a far cry from the 1.2 million for the next player out. Oh, and I love the smell of an ex-Marine with aces in the morning. Uh, we're, we're in the afternoon, sir. Ooh, why don't you just disappear until the evening, then? <laughs> Blinds at 500,000 and 1 million. A raise to 2 million from Park and his aces. Aldemir on the button with eights. Makes the call. Jack Oliver, small blind. Folds King Jack. Osger Sechilmish in the big blind. Jack, eight of diamonds. Sechilmish trying to become the first Turkish main event champ. Jack Oliver trying to become the first British-born champ. He calls to make it a three-way flop. Park remains the shortest stack, even though he is 30 big blinds deep. Here's the flop. Say Chilmish with top pair, but it's second best. He checks. Park told us his favorite hand is Jack Tin suited, but he'll try to muddle through with only pocket aces here. And he slides two and a half million forward. Aldemir gets the message and folds his pocket pair. This is bad news for Sechilmish. He called out of the big blind because he was getting six and a half to one, then flops top pair, and it's no good. Heads up. Another 10 on the turn. 10 of clubs. Sechilmish. 
say Chilmish puts out three million. I guess he decides that he is best and leads out. And Park has got to wonder if his opponent now has trip tens. Well, you folks at home can try to spot the tells on the better. Park matches the three million. Seven of hearts on the river. Parks, aces, and tens are best. Now say Chilmish checks. Back to plan A. And Park now might be figuring he's best with aces up. And he's figuring he's best with aces up. Lots of yellow chips. That's 11 and a half million. Yeah, about half a stack on the river. Park's only got 11 bigs behind. And my experience is when ex-Marines bet that much, they always have it. <laughs> Jack Oliver next to say Chilmish has talked about the importance of good laydowns and how key they are to success. Osger will pat himself on the back someday if he can get away from this. Colin here would leave Sechomish with only 15 bigs. I have a super bluff catch on the <laughs> well, Bluff catchers are rendered useless when your opponent's not bluffing. <laughs> we saw him make a, a, a big correct call against George Holmes that would have left him short. And he does correctly fold here. The radar is up and operational for Sechomish. And Henry Park with more chips being pushed his way. Good fold and Henry doing Henry things. Henry Park knows what it's like to hold the main event chip lead. He's working his way back to the top spot with his top knot. But it's going to take a lot to overtake Karai Aldemir. It really is a show within a show. This is a cash game. These people are going at it for real money. But then this sub layer of, and we get to know why. Welcome back to Las Vegas in the final table at the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino. Nice to see the Amazon room full, both with players and the crowd. I'm Lon McCarron with Norman Chad. Alejandro Lococo, one of the improbable stories at this final table. A rapper by trade, poker player for fun. He's captivated the country with his run. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yo, yo suelto bass, nunca en contra de la ley. Papo en sí, en escenario o en la final table desde el main event, ¿ok? You know, put down a teleprompter and I could rap the same thing. <coughs> big deal. Lococo in the big blind here. Action folded to George Holmes. He was at 83 million to start this final table. Down to third place now in 52 million. A raise with pocket fives to Remedio now. Queen eight. Remedio in his first main event at age 27. Chris Moneymaker was 27 in his first main event when he won in 03. Hold the two, Lococo, the second biggest stack now. You know, actually, I have listened to his battle raps for decades. He's been good since he was six. A, a battle rap prodigy, if you will, the Lionel Messi of rap. Wow, you never cease to amaze me with your ever-evolving sense of worldly cultural dynamics. Well, Lococo now, I guess, trying to become the Doral Brunson of poker calling with the 10 deuce. Well, Lococo quickly overcomes the small pocket pair of Holmes, flopping top pair. He checks. Holmes. Continuation bet. About one third of the pot. Check raise his home game, but Papo MC. You, you even got more chips than him now. Holmes has lost some ground. Just a call from Lococo. Four of diamonds, adding a flush draw to the rapper's repertoire and a straight draw to Holmes. If you had any doubts, Lococo's got outs. He just might make it and win that bracelet. I'm ready for the Woo! big time battle rap. Word. This is what I love about the World Series of Poker. You got this home game Holmes against the Argentinian rapper sitting at the World Series of Poker final table. Check to the river. Another four. Ensures Lococo is best at a showdown. Damian Salas won the hybrid main event in 2020. Lococo trying to go back to back for Argentina. Yeah, a hybrid, but a main event champion nonetheless. His poster hangs here in the Rio as Lococo bets three and a half million. 
Holmes with a bluff catcher here. We've discussed bluff catchers. <laughs> Holmes does pay him off. No bluff. And Lococo with a rather low key post pot reaction. Yeah, Lococo, a little quiet here, but in recent years, Celebrations have been a little infrequent at the main event. Players keeping their composure, trying to stay in the moment, but not with Alejandro Lococo normally. Every big win, a reason to find his rail. He's got an energy that is enjoyable. I just wish he'd take off the mask and wrap at the table. Papo MC back in the fray, raising into the only bigger stack of Aldemir. And Aldemir calls with the Jack-10 offsuit against Lococo's suited ace. Seven Jack-9, Lococo gets bitten on the flop this time. Aldemir catches top pair. They both check. Oh, come on, Aldemir, you should have donk bet, you fish. Flush draw now to Lococo, but he still trails the pair of jacks. All right, Corai Aldemir. You're the best player with the best hand, the best eyebrows, and the best mask. Act accordingly. He's going to do just that. 2.8 million. However, if you had any doubts, Lococo's got outs. He just might make it and win that bracelet. <laughs> wow. On a more serious note, uh, if I'm Popo MC, I would try to stay out of pots with Karai Aldemir. Well, he's got equity. And he's got calling chips. They'll see a river card. Jack's up now for Aldemir. To try to put some distance between himself and chip stack number two. 3.4 million. Aldemir not worried that an eight completes a straight. He's telling Lococo, you battle rap, I battle river. With only ace high, Lococo. He waves the white flag. Folks getting what they came for. The two big stacks tangling at the final table. Aldemir's rail rejected Gordon Davis. <laughs> so much to play for, and we're just getting started. Easy come, easy go for Papo MC. Win one from Holmes, lose to Aldemir. For now, Lococo riding high in second place, looking to bring the World Championship back to Argentina again. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high Roller Bowl 7 champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Welcome back to the 2021 final table. If you're wondering where former champs started their final table, we've got you covered. Ensign, Blumstein, and McKeon all started at finish first, while Martin Jacobson climbed from eighth all the way to a world championship. Aldemir hoping to ride his chip lead all the way to the win. He's doing it with great support. Jeff Platt has more. Quite the rail for Kawhi Aldemir today. Very vocal, to say the least and very aligned on what they're wearing. Those KO shirts, a nice touch, and what a story it is behind them. Aldemir's family in Germany started hand-stitching the shirts individually starting on day two of this tournament and had them overnighted to the States in time for the final table. All right, that was, that was just Sam Grafton's story. This group actually had a connection to a t-shirt place here in Vegas who made shirts for Hossein Ensign's run in 2019. So they got in touch late last night and boom, early this morning, the shirts were ready. They're hoping that the same shirt manufacturer creates the same amount of luck for Aldemir this year. On his GPI, the Hendon Mob bio board, you see a very strong number in career earnings, which could be boosted greatly with a win here. You know, I like Sam Grafton's version better. 
Aldemir with a premium hand, ace-king of clubs on the button. He saw Remedio open the pot from early position with jacks and will put the flag at half-staff now for Josh. Alon McCarron Memorial hand. Oliver folds his small blind, said Chilmish his big. So back to Remedio now. By the way, speaking of where main event champions began at the final table. Let us not forget that Jerry Yang, like Martin Jacobson, started eighth in chips when he won. And he'll call for 3.9 million Remedio, the third best stack to start this hand. Pocket Jacks can't run with them, can't run from them. And here is the flop. Two nines, one club, and a deuce, which is uh, my new CBS sitcom coming this fall, by the way. <laughs> Remedio checks. Jackson nines, the best hand. Of course, Aldemir is obliged to follow up on his three bet with a C bet here. C bet, shmi bet. You know, GTO to me is game theory optional, and I don't use solvers, I use a horoscope. <laughs> You're going long range, huh? Aldemir, 2.7 million. Making the final table in his first main event. Remedio says, I'm just trying to wake up from this dream. He also says his strength is no fear. Well, you've got pocket jacks. Show no fear, son. Though personally, I I'd muck my hand and, and run to the <laughs> poker kitchen for a $4 banana. <laughs> well, he's going to stick it out. 2.7 million from Josh now. Queen of spades on the turn. Queen Schmeen. Yeah, Josh still good. Lead out. Show some muscle. Check. Ah. Nope. Now Aldemir. Just ace king. Yeah, yeah. What you going to do, big shot? Why don't you go all in and put your sweater in the middle too? That might scare him off. Wow, he checks back. Ah, uh, scaredy cat. Hmm. Ah, scaredy cat no more. Aldemir is scoring big on the river. Aldemir keeps hitting cards. Mm -hmm. Remedio doesn't like the queen, doesn't like the ace, checks again. It's been this kind of uh, main event for Aldemir, the best player, running the best. That's hard to beat. If I ever run well in my home game, which George Holmes is not invited to, look out. Wow, no value town for Aldemir. Going big, 14.3 million. And pocket jacks die another death. They should take the jacks out of the deck. Well, Remedio gave it his best shot. <laughs> Remedio finally releases the jacks. Ace-King just a drawing hand until it's not. The Aldemir Express still on track. Oh, maybe Gordon Davis did force his way onto Korai's rail. That's <laughs> noise. The players are back. The rails are back. The main event final table is back. Good feelings all around as we work our way from seven players down to a new champion. Here are the payouts brought to you by Cuervo. There are no strangers. Relatively tiny pay jumps early on at this final table, but then they get big. It's a 700K jump from fourth to third then a million three, and then 3.7 million from second to first. Karai Aldemir in full stride now under the gun, raising with queen six of diamonds. Yeah, he's getting real feisty with squad douche. Queen six suited under the gun with the raise. Over to Holmes now. Queen Trey of hearts. He cashed in his first main event in 2019, so he's now two for two. And Holmes getting busy with the lesser hand. That's a three bet to 4.8 million with position. Yeah, Holmes is unrelentingly sneaky aggressive. He's far more active than he looks. He has many different ways to show him the lights. Lococo, small blind, small ace, second biggest stack. Lococo will give up the suited ace. Back to Aldemir now. 
See, Karan, I'd, I'd keep this guy out of your home game, too. <laughs> well, queen six of diamonds, the best hand here, and he makes the call for 2.8 million more. Two big guns to the flop. Now he had the best hand. Holmes flops the hard flush. Action on Aldemir. He's going to check it. Take a snapshot of those percentages next to their names. Unheard of in these parts. That's three million. Three million. No posturing from Holmes. Holmes hoping Aldemir has something like a big pocket pair to continue, but all Karai has is a gut shot. Karai got a purple five million chip in there, a check raise. Woo. How many times have we seen Aldemir misread or misstep this badly? I, I can't think of one. Stop the presses. There are no presses anymore. Print newspapers, Norman, all but dead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kiljoy. <laughs> and I hold you personally responsible for the demise of newspapers. A call from Holmes, of course. Ace of spades on the turn. Another bad card for Aldemir. I'm not sure how that ace will allow Aldemir to continue much further. Karai does check again. Wow, just when he started to flex his big stack muscle, Aldemir runs into a flopped flush. All in. Woo! Hello. I have diamonds, not hearts. It's red. Uh, there you go. Pretty easy for George Holmes. After the flop, the courage came pre-flop. The home game heroes back in business. George Holmes picking up some chips, going right through the chip leader, Karai Aldemir. 0.1%. That represents the lucky seven left at the 2021 World Series of Poker main event. Leading the way is Karai Aldemir, the 31-year-old German pro with the friendly demeanor and killer instinct. He's had the chip lead, he's in the chip lead, and hopes to keep the chip lead. But fierce competition stands in his way. It's a numbers game at the final table. How does one become the one with $8 million? Seven players now vying for one main event championship. The reward, $8 million and the bracelet. Hi everyone, Lon McCarron along with my broadcast partner, Norman Chad and Jeff Platt reporting from the floor of the Amazon room. We've come a long way to get here from no main event to an overflowing Amazon room to a final table with seven left. German pro Karai Aldemir in full control. Young, likable, talented, good looking. He makes me sick and I mean physically ill. Oskar Sechomish is the short stack representing his home country of Turkey. He's no Karai Aldemir, I'll tell you that. He doesn't make me sick. Nine became seven at this final table pretty quickly. Software engineer Chase Bianchi out in ninth and Brit Jareth East departed in eighth. A look now at our chip counts brought to you by Caesars Sportsbook. Aldemir outpacing the field by more than double. Alejandro Lococo has surprised the Argentine rapper comfortably in second. And how about George Holmes? He works a banking job, he plays a home game, and he's got a shot at the biggest prize in poker. George right now in third place on the chip counts has defied the odds to be here at this final table. I've done small local tournaments, but nothing like this. So this is the second time I've been here. It's been amazing. Um, I've got friends and family all over the country that are texting me, emailing me like, I didn't know you were there, oh my God. I was texting my friends and I said, I've got a table full of wizards and sorcerers, but in this game, anybody can win any given day. He has been fun to watch, George in the big blind right now. Henry Park has the action, retired U.S. Marine has viewed this main event from the top perch. He led the field to start day seven with pocket tens raised to two million. Park lives in Edgewater, New Jersey. George Holmes originally from New Jersey. What a presence New Jersey has had at this main event final table over the last decade. Josh Beckley, William Tonking, 
Tom Canuli, Mike Ruan, and of course 2017 champion Scott Blumstein. Blinds right now at a half million and one million with the one million chip. Big blind Andy Holmes comes along for one million. Heads up with Park. Park still good with the tens, which are bolstered by a flush draw now. Holmes checks to Park, who sits about in the middle of the pack here with seven players left. Check back. Another seven keeps Park a huge favorite. I'm not even sure why George Holmes is in this pot. I, I would have folded this hand in the big blind. If you defend your big blind too often, you've got no big blinds left to defend. Ooh, I like that. T-shirt material. A bet from Holmes here. Yeah, that, that's the hidden George Holmes. No pair, no draw, seemingly no hope, lots of heart. If he senses weakness, he shows strength. And I think Park, checking the flop, got what he wants. I think he wanted Holmes stabbing at him. And there is the call with one oversized royal purple chip worth five million. Change coming. The way Park just flicks that chip in there, it, it's very tilting to me. Now what, gentlemen? Holmes' aggression was matched somewhat reluctantly on the turn. Yeah, what now, home game hero? Holmes reaching. Really? Yeah, really. Ooh, a lot of the purples. 27 million? <laughs> Into a pot of 12? Maybe it's brain freeze, and George thinks he stumbled into a Kardashian undergarment auction. <laughs> he, he just bet more than half his stack with air. Just 24 bigs left if Park calls. But he's telling Park, if you do call and you lose, you're down to eight bigs. Two overcards, a parrot board, three spades, and Holmes makes it 27 million. And there is the fold. I wonder if Park is channeling Ron Burgundy from Anchorman. I'm not even angry. I'm actually quite impressed. And he should be. I can't imagine anybody in Atlanta any better than George Holmes. Well, how about this, sir? Atlanta pro Josh Arie, who was mostly known for his 04 final table, put together quite a run this year. Two bracelets, a dozen caches, and he won the World Series of Poker Player of the Year award. Josh Arie, really? I, I had a full head of hair the last time he was a factor here. Who could have thunk it? <laughs> Alejandro Lococo now seeing if he can bring pocket tens to the finish line. He is second in chips. First in the hearts of Argentine battle rappers. And there is raise to two million. Back to Henry Park for a moment. What a missed opportunity for him. If he had called Holmes there, he would have vaulted into second place in chips. Ace 10 of diamonds. Looks like he's had enough of the bigger stacks at the moment. He folds to Aldemir, who has pocket nines. And with double, double the chip stack of Lococo. Opposite ends of the table, the battle rapper in the hoodie, the librarian wannabe in the sweater. <laughs> Battle rapper dominating Aldemir. Aldemir with a three bet to 5.6 million. Now around to George Holmes, the big blind. Pocket sevens. Not a good time for pocket sevens. No, it's not. Lococo now with the tens. I have politely counseled Lococo to stay out of pots with Aldemir, but this hand dictates otherwise. Popo MC out of position. And he's going to opt just for the call. Two top dogs in the ring. His nines against Lococo's tens. Here is the flop. And Aldemir, the golden child of the main event, flops nines full. Whoa. Why don't we just put up a graphic? What are the chances of Aldemir flopping a full house and see what those numbers are? <laughs> Lococo checking to the aggressor. Wow. Aldemir, no slow play here. Looks like he wants to build a pot against his nearest rival. 3.9 million. Lococo cannot shrink away from a, a single C bet on the flop. Aldemir 
could have ace-king, ace-queen, or could be on a straight or flush draw. Cutting out some yellows and lavenders. And this is actually a pretty good flop for pocket tens. Mm -hmm. and there is the call. Almost 18 million in the pot right now between the two big stacks. Turn card, eight of hearts. Papo with an open ender now. Checks again. And more reason for the 29-year-old rapper to hang around, which is bad news. Papo MC is dead to a river jack or 10. Chip counts below the players. Pictures at the lower left represent a live count after they've acted. And it's going to change right now. Lococo checked. Aldemir bets 11.4 million. The two biggest stacks headed in opposite directions in this big pot. Exactly what Aldemir had in mind. Up and down straight draw for Lococo, but a straight would be no good. Coco likes his hand enough to stick around. He commits the chips to build a pot of over 44 million. Another small card on the river. This whole board working against Lococo. Is that seven big chips or? How many big chips? Thank you. Lococo never improved his tens. Now he can get away from it. Wow, reaching for the big stack of purples, enough to put Lococo all in. And Aldemir hides his head, just like he did when he had the nuts and put Ark Onical all in. Mask off and called by Lococo. Wow, wow, wow. He is gone. I, you know, we don't talk ICM here because ICM is above our pay grades. But if we were to talk about ICM, Lococo implodes, period. Started the hand in second, finishes out in seventh. Not a good result. That is a wrap nice on Papo MC. Yeah. All 67 million of his chips now belong to Karai Aldemir. Lococo out in seventh place. Karai Aldemir flopped big and got paid bigger than anyone expected. Alejandro Lococo called it off, resulting in a seventh place finish. He's with Jeff Platt. Papo MC, Alejandro, I know it's tough right now. How are you feeling? Um. Now I'm feeling bad, of course, but I know that in a few days I'm going to be very happy when when I arrive to my home and see <laughs> my, my wife and my children and hey, I won 1.4 million, <laughs> it's okay. I was searching for the glory, not for, yes, the, not yes. for, not for the prize pool, mm -hmm. so it's okay. <laughs> we loved having you here. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. I am still shell-shocked that Aldemir got all of Lococo's chips in that hand. The other beneficiary of Lococo's bust-out, super short-stack Osger Sechilmish, who has a new fan on his virtual rail. You learn something new from everyone. I like people. There are so many high-quality intellectual people uh, because the America country loves the poker and uh, some countries, especially my country, uh, it's not something super nice. And so here is a really, for a poker player, uh, paradise. My mother never liked what I'm doing, but for the first time, I don't know why, she told me I had saw a dream uh, and I saw ladybugs all were thousands of in your home. And it's in Turkish, we say it, luck insect, this ladybug. So I shocked because my mother very sane person and I said, this will gonna work. <laughs> and you see, <laughs> it's so funny. I'm not superstitious, but 10 years of my career, she never something nice to me, first time, and uh, it worked, it's <laughs> amazing.
Turkey with only one World Series bracelet winner in history. Sachilmish trying to become the first Turkish main event champ. Four big blinds for Ozger. He's had a pretty good stack throughout the main event. <laughs> and what's this? <laughs> the sacred Turkish all-in ceremony, a first for us. Ozger the showman. <laughs> Anybody want to take his chips? Nobody wants to take his chips. Park in the small blind. Nope. This is very bad. Oh, this is the same, though. <laughs> so there's the call with pocket okay. fours. And here we go, 100% of Osger's chips in the middle, but only 2% of Karai's. This Aldemir cares not who he bludgeons. Mm. You just mentioned it. It's just 2% of his chip sack. It's like Mark Zuckerberg buying a, a Pez dispenser factory. <laughs> Aldemir does not lose flips. So, Oscar, it was nice knowing you. Say hi to your mom for us. How can't you root for this guy, Yankees cap aside? Ace queen at risk against the fours. Straight. You know, it's not even a terrible thing for Aldemir to lose this flip. A short stack at the table makes it easier to steal the blinds. <laughs> so, Osger? I feel like Benjamin Button. That's a fade of four. This is your call to go, man. Okay. Play the board! Play the board! Play the board! Play the board! Jack! Jack! All oh, good for St. Chilmish. Aldemir <laughs> spares St. Chilmish with a mercy double up. <laughs> 12.4 million, yeah. <laughs> he survived to ladder up a few rungs and now wins his battle against the big stack. By the way, Sachilmish is a big field mastermind. This is his fifth cash this World Series in fields of 3,800 or larger. He traveled the furthest distance to play this main event, Istanbul, 6,600 miles from Las Vegas. Lococo at the bottom of the map came from Argentina, four from the U.S., two from the U.K., and chip leader Karai Aldemir coming from Austria. I've got to tell you, on that map, the earth appears to be flat. <laughs> Folded to the always fun blind on blind situation. Park in the small blind, pocket sevens. And he just calls 600K from his 20 million stack. Should be 19. Thank you. Aldemir generally likes to knock out somebody every 23 minutes. It's been a while since he busted Lococo. I think he's getting hangry. Park, I guess, just limped, thinking Aldemir was going to create a little extra action, which he is going to do now. Give an ace-queen a spin. And that's a raise to 3.8 million. Park with just 16 big blinds behind. You know what strikes me? That the, the person who invented the vest pulled one over on us. They serve absolutely no purpose. They, they don't keep you warm. They don't cool you down. Pocket sevens, all in. And a quick call from Aldemir. He's trying to do it again. Well, these hands play themselves, Lon, which means you and I could have uh, correctly sevens. navigated them. <laughs> Henry Parks chips at risk against Aldemir. Everyone trying to go through the man, it seems. Hands up. Remember, except for those pocket fours, Aldemir does not lose flips. He and Stephen Chidwick took the same flipping class. Park told us he's confident. He wants to invest time and money in himself to become an elite player. Pocket sevens ahead right now and still ahead after the flop. By the way, even after losing that flip to Sachilmish, it's less than 10% of Aldemir's massive stack in the middle right now. 
Aldemir needs an ace or a queen to overtake the sevens for the moment. Turn card. Oh! The queen for Karai. Yeah. Who couldn't see that coming? Yeah. Park and his rail are going to need that seven now. Aldemir says nine to your sevens, and the game has come to a close for Henry Park. Sixth place and a million four. Park with his third main event cash. He was once the chip leader not too long ago, but hands all of his chips to the man who has most of the chips, Karai Aldemir. A small hit earlier, but Aldemir keeps extending his lead, this time at the expense of Henry Park. The 38-year-old Marine handled himself with class at all times. Good game, sir. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high rollerball seven champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. He is the most accomplished player at this final table and he had the most chips coming into this final table. That combination working really well for Karai Aldemir as he speeds toward the massive $8 million payday and the gold bracelet with five remaining. He's turning this main event final table into the 1973 Belmont Stakes when Secretariat won by 31 lengths. He grew up in Berlin, Germany, but counts Vienna, Austria as home, something that's pretty common among the German-born poker players. He studied psychology in college, a major that certainly can't hurt at the poker table. Whatever he's doing now, though, working to perfection. He was actually short-stacked in the early going of this main event. Wouldn't even be here unless he got lucky on day two when he was all in with Ace-5 against Ace-Jack. Now he's got more than 60% of the chips in play. Yep, beginning the hand with 252 million. Aldemir folded to the button raised by Josh Remedio with Ace-9 of hearts. Jack Oliver in the big blind with a 7 owning the bigger stack for the moment. Yeah, you said like 30 roughly? The two youngest players more. here, Oliver 26, Remedio right. 27. All right, thanks. Uh, Norman, these young kids don't know how to flop. Six high flop for the two ace high hands. Oliver and Remedio both in their first main event seeking poker history. Check, check. Oliver finds top pair on the turn. Oliver, like George Holmes, has battled back from a short stack prior to this final table. Oliver says he's had to struggle to contain his excitement at being at this final table. He's doing a pretty good job so far of containing himself. A bet of 1.2 million here. Nothing much here for Josh Remedio. But you can't tell these kids anything nowadays, Lon. No, you can't. Yep, he'll come along. Another six on the river. Gotta believe Oliver, pretty sure that he has the best of it here. Two yellow chips, two million, less than a quarter pot. Mio just with ace high, apparently considering all of his options here. And let me break those down for you, Lon. Okay. A, a fold would work, a call would not work, a raise doesn't seem to make any sense, so I don't think it works either. Remind me again how you found work as a poker analyst. Hey, they came to me, so go ask them. Remedio cuts out two million, puts it back. And he does call. And Oliver will take that pot of 13 million. Not a huge pot, but certainly helpful to Oliver, who continues to plod along. Jeff Platt has more on the young Brit. It's cliche to say a player a few words lets his chips do the talking, but what if that's just the truth? Jack Oliver has come across as calm, cool, collected in his very first World Series of Poker main event, in his first poker tournament with a buy-in of more than $1,500. In my 
brief conversation with Oliver earlier in the tournament. I asked him why he decided to fire the main. He told me, I'm a poker player. This tournament is great for poker players. Hard to argue that point. Hard to argue that we won't see a lot more of Jack Oliver. Tournament summary is brought to you by Solve for Why. Lococo's bust the big story so far from second place to out in just one hand. Karai Aldemir with a seemingly insurmountable chip lead, holding 63% of the chips in play with five players left. He's back in action. King four of spades reaching for chips, a raise to 2.4 million. And I understand there's been some discussion down there about simply awarding the pot to Aldemir anytime he raises pre-flop. <laughs> it would save time. Line to 600,000, 1.2 million. Holmes has been a very worthy opponent for Aldemir. And with ace jack, just calls. Good hand for Holmes, who doesn't mind taking on the only stack that can bust him out of position. Top two stacks seeing a flop, and okay then, top pair for Holmes. Flush draw for Aldemir. That is a final table flop, sir. Dangerous territory now for George Holmes. If this hand goes south, he could lose a big chunk of his stack. Holmes checks to the aggressor. Aldemir, four spades to a flush. That is 2.9 million. Bring it on, Holmes, <laughs> but step lightly, sir. All right. A check raise from George. Aldemir with nut flush draw, Holmes with top pair. This reminds me of Basil Rathbone and Tyrone Power dueling in the Mark of Zorro, 1940. Ooh, that's on the black and white Netflix, right? Oh. <laughs> All right, Aldemir calls for 5.1 million more. Turn card, Jack of Diamonds, aces up for Holmes. Aldemir still with a flush draw, added a straight draw. It gets better for Holmes, but now he's got to dodge a flush draw and a straight draw. If either hits, his stack could be decimated. Aldemir, three to one dog here. And George looks like he's ready to lead now. That is over half the pot, 13 million. Well, Aldemir is going to call here. That's what Tyrone Power did in the Mark of Zorro. Huge river card coming. Assuming he calls. Oh, he's calling. He called. Over 49 million in the pot now between the two top stacks. The river card. Ace of diamonds, George with aces full and giving Aldemir plenty of excuses to exit gracefully. You know, when you out flop, out turn, and out river your opponent, you probably have a winner. <laughs> and here comes George with all of it. Ah, the mark of Zorro had a much more climactic ending. George Holmes on the rise. We haven't seen a lot of that. Aldemir missing an opponent, raking the big pot. Perhaps the script is getting flipped, just like the Mark of Zorro. We are closing in on a main event champion, someone about to win $8 million, and that bracelet alone worth over half a million. What a sight to see for the man with only 13 big blinds. Osger say chumish with aces. Well, he's going to need a dance partner to double up. All in. Part A complete. All in. Holmes with pocket fives. Call. Oh, wow. And a mental fist bump, no doubt, from Osger. Well, Holmes willing to gamble for 20% of his stack. Let's go. Let's go. Hope he's in a race and he's not. Oh, gosh. Let's go. <laughs> he's got aces. Guys, let's go. I called him. He's got aces. Yeah. It's, only, it's only 10K. Don't do it, George. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Take it easy, George. 
Who would want to get rid of this guy? What a delight. No, don't do it, George. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to that guy. Don't do it. Show the lights. Show the lights. Show the lights. 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 Thank you, George. Thank you. Show the lights. Here's the interesting thing. George's wife, Felicia, is on the rail, but it's Gordon Davis with his hand on George's shoulder. Hmm. <laughs> How much? Thank you, George. Let's go, let's go. Who would want to get rid of this guy? Uh, ah. More chips to play with. Oh, man, I like back. you, but I try nice to get rid thing. of you, man. <laughs> nice comeback. Well, you always have to be lucky to make the Base final queen, table, but say Chilmish perhaps a little luckier than most. A five-outer to keep him alive on Whoa. day seven. <laughs> That ended up really decimating Ramon Colias, who went from one of the chip leaders to out before this final table. Now, say Chilmush with kings and over 40 million to start this hand. A raise to 2.4 million. Aces, now kings, and now he can play a little bit of real poker with 34 bigs. Holmes will step aside this time. Josh from Media in the small blind. 10 9 of diamonds. You'd love to see a flop with 10-9 suited, but Remedio doesn't have the stack to fool around. What's this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I am all in. There you go. He's all in. <laughs> if he was going for the fossil man look, uh, he missed the I'm mark. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't see. Sorry, I didn't see. Oh. No good. No good. Remedio showing us another way to go all in. <laughs> Hold the 10 high. Come on, baby. Let's go. This is the one. Who would want to get rid of this guy? You cannot find a villain in this bunch. Osger nearly four to one to get even stronger with the Kings. King of Diamonds! King of Diamonds! Here we go. Remedio at risk and oh my! Josh called his shot. I think that flop just added 10 years to Josh's life. <laughs> Remedio still good. Chilmish needs a king to bust Remedio. The river card, the ace of diamonds. <laughs> Josh Remedio and company still alive in the main event. Let's go! It's quite an adrenaline rush out there, partner. Arizona State giving Great Britain a run for their money for the enthusiastic rail. <laughs> Aces hold, Kings could not. Osger St. Chumish misses a pay bump and puts himself back on the short stack at this final table in the process while Josh Remedio is back in business. Have you ever wondered what professional poker players are really thinking? Interesting spot here. Unadulterated joy, that feeling when 10-9 cracks pocket kings in the biggest all-in of your life. Enjoy it, Josh from Medio. Final table payouts brought to you by Cuervo. There are no strangers. Everyone guaranteed 1.8 million now. Say Chilmish has the action. 
And the short stack, king five of hearts. And once again, he hears that clock ticking on his main event life. He says all in, 17 and a half million. Holmes won't be around. Remedio either. Aldemir, small blind. Ooh, pocket nines. Aldemir. Of course, of course it's Aldemir. Of course. This guy causes all the trouble. He has knocked out the last two players, going for the hat trick here. And he, three bets to oh. isolate. Big blind falls. Oscar St. Chelmersh at risk and on his rail again. Well, two kings let him down. Maybe one king will do the trick. Well, so Chilmish politely calling Aldemir the small blind. I would call him much worse. You know, if they stayed at the table, they could see the actual cards as they hit the felt instead of having to watch the overhead screen. Just saying. Say Chilmish with one over card to the pocket nines of Aldemir. Here is the flop. And two hearts and some counterfeit outs for St. Chilmish. Not a bad start. No, a slot machine of outs for the Turk now. Nines for Aldemir, still best. Another ace. Oh, no. Not helpful to Osger stealing outs to win. Well, I guess the Jack chant now becomes an ace or king chant. Osger looking to try to score a win again. A small portion once again of Aldemir's stack at risk. The river card is a blank, and it is game over for Osger St. Chumish. Hate to see you go, Osger. A million eight for the very well-liked player. Aldemir, man. Aldemir. Aldemir, man. Hey, we've got to get together a posse to stop this Aldemir. Three straight eliminations for Aldemir and another half million guaranteed for our survivors. Rule one of this final table, don't get it all in against Aldemir and expect to survive. Oscar say Chilmish, the latest victim, and we are down to four. Always entertaining, never grouchy, but now Mr. Say Chilmish is out. He's with Jeff Platt now. Oscar, always smiling, even in defeat. How much fun did you have in this tournament? How much fun? Yeah. I, I even don't know. You know, I didn't see the money jump yet. Uh, I, I even don't know. <laughs> I'm so excited and. Uh, didn't look. Yeah. Do you want me to tell you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How does $1.8 million sound to you? Amazing, amazing, much more. Oh, a, lot of, that was a lot of money. What was this experience like for you? Every poker player should visit here. And if someone likes poker, should come here. It's an amazing atmosphere. Thank you very much Thank for you. the time. Appreciate it. Thank you. So now, only four players with a chance to become our new world champion. Jack Oliver under the gun, the short stack, Jack all nine in. of diamonds. He says all in. He saw how well the 10 nine of diamonds worked for Remedio. Oliver in the same spot that so Chilmus was just in, nursing a short stack, having to push with a less than premium hand. Folded to Remedio in the small blind third place with ace jack. And he's ready to get all his chips in the middle. And Aldemir with queens. Oh, no. oh my. Aldemir. Always oh, Aldemir. All right, boys. We need a f ace, all right? We need a f ace. One knockout at a time, not enough for this menace to society. Now he wants double knockouts. Come on, baby. Aldemir favored for the double knockout and to get heads up right now. Oliver with Jack Nine. Remedio with Ace Jack, both at risk. Oliver in rod and shape. Remedio not much better, but he handles it differently. All right, here we go. Nine, 10, eight. We got both of the all-in players with open enders. I, I don't even know where to start with this flop now, Juan. Someone's gonna win, someone's gonna lose. And the dreaded pirate, Aldemir, still with a 56% chance of a double elimination. Turn card now. What a moment for these two, for everyone. Another diamond, Oliver adds a flush draw. 
Okay, Oliver's picked up that flush draw, and Aldemir sells 60% to earn George Holmes a $2 million pay jump by busting two players at once. G -g 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 Get me a medic. <laughs> flush possible, straight possible. Still, the double knockout in play, but it's a seven of diamonds. the flush to triple up. Remedio with the straight to win the side pod. We're still four-handed. Let's go. <laughs> oh. Yo. Oh, you Love you guys, but I'm on, on up cover. Let's go. All right. Yeah. Oliver started that hand joyless. He ended it literally Six jumping for joy. Here. That's right, buddy. Pay up. You got to pay to play. <laughs> Wow, that just might be the hand of the tournament. We're going to take a moment. Everyone impacted. Aldemir, human after all. Holmes misses out on two million. Remedio short stack. Jack Oliver in second place now. Oh, my. What a hand. Just before the break, what a show of emotion for Jack Oliver. He gets tonight's Cuervo moment for his reaction to spiking a flush on the river to save his main event life. Stoic for so long, focused for so long, but all that pent up excitement came out when the seven of diamonds came crashing down on the river. Jack Oliver with renewed main event life. Yeah. Oliver. <laughs> Did, oh you, my did God. you like the celebration? <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't celebrated. When I saw the flush, I, like, I was ready to just like. I haven't congrats, celebrated like... once in this tournament <laughs> at all, ever. What would you say? I haven't celebrated once in this tournament yet. That was I mean, my first celebration. That's the biggest one. You celebrate. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not saying it's not. I just. I celebrate when I lose. <laughs> trying to keep the emotions on the, on the low. Yeah. Remedio the short That's stack. Brutal for you <laughs> to go for potentially heads up, heads, still four handed. Yeah, like, good lord. Hmm, this might be the one, boys. I'm drenched. Eight bigs for Remedio. He's in the same spot yeah. we just saw Sachilmish and Oliver. 59. I am all in. <laughs> Don't be confused. This is not the Maui Jim all in moment. Aldemir will not get involved. Oliver. How much? It's a lot. Well, not a lot for Oliver. He's now the second biggest stack. All right, let's and go. he does make the call. We're live, baby. Come on. We need some hearts. Or a jack or a seven. Wow, as you mentioned, Norman, you can't cheer against any of these guys. What a contrast between Remedio and Oliver. Remedio forever, boisterous. Oliver pretty bottled up. All right, I need my rail. I need my rail. Come Both on, in man. their first main event. Oliver, stoic again. Come on. Oh, no, 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 no. Oliver gets his ace. Josh did seven. get the seven. 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 Let's get a seven ball for the boys. No, that, we said seven. We said seven. <laughs> $700,000 pay jump awaits the final three. Come on. The river card, and we are down to our final three. What a ride for Josh Remedio. And like Bozger, Sachilmish before him, Josh goes out with a big smile. Yeah, Norman, let's act just like that when we final table the main event. <laughs> The chip counts brought to you by Caesars Sportsbook. Six eliminated, three remain. Holmes, Oliver, and of course, Aldemir. And it's Oliver in second, not Holmes. Let's go down to Jeff Platt. Josh, out in fourth, but a magical run. Yeah, Sum up for us what you are feeling right now. Honestly, I, I know a lot of people are pretty sad about busting out, you know, thinking about what, what could have been, but man, I th this is the reason why I'm, I'm here. Like, my all my friends and family coming in, it's unreal. And what does that support mean to you? Everything. Money means nothing to me. 
We really enjoyed having you here. We really enjoyed getting to know you. Thanks so much for the time. I appreciate it. Congratulations. And the question remains, is Karai Aldemir unstoppable? Looking to go wire to wire here at the main event final table. Las Vegas is known for its shows. Last night, for one night, the show was on the felt. Karai Aldemir, the overwhelming chip leader to start the main event final table, opened with flair. Impressed in between, and closed with perfection. It was a virtuoso performance. Despite Aldemir's lead, his work is not done. George Holmes and Jack Oliver aren't patrons, they're players. And until the last pot is pushed, no one is a champion. The opening act is complete. The final act upon us. Big money, bright lights, the bracelet, the show must go on. It is the biggest spectacle in poker. The status, the payouts, the bracelet, also tantalizingly close for our final three. Lon McCarron along with Norman Chad. It's been an entertaining journey thus far. Jack Oliver, thanks to a recent flush on the river, is still in the game. That got him excited for the first time. Winning the main event, I assume, might be the second time. 49-year-old George Holmes was once down to one big blind. Thanks to Jack Oliver, he has 33 big blinds now. The Atlanta amateur is trying to show him the lights. He's got two more victims in mind. And we have Karai Aldemir, the chip leader, since we had 20 players. Talented, focused, and in prime position to close out this main event. Remember that famous headline, Dewey beats Truman? I've already gone to the presses with Aldemir wins it all. Big payouts await the final three, as we see on the tournament summary brought to you by Solve for Why. Norman, three very distinct players with three distinct personalities. And three distinct questions. Can Aldemir go wire to wire at this final table? Can Oliver become the first British-born player to win the main event? And can Holmes go from weekly home game to world champion? Oliver opened it up, the youngest to make this final table, 26-year-old with 9-8 of hearts, a raise to 4 million, folded to Aldemir, big blind with a big stack and small ace. The small ace line is the weak ace. The weak ace brought down the Ottoman Empire, my friend. Almost 10.5 million in the middle, heads up. And there is an ace in the flop. Aldemir checks top pair. Oliver with a less than inspiring flop for his 9-8 of hearts. Oliver, well-educated, knows not to confuse the Ottoman Empire with the Ottoman chair. He continues for 3.2 million. Aldemir pretty much has outplayed, outflopped, and outrivered everyone with an arm's length the last several days. Aldemir, a 9-1 to -one favorite now after that flop. <clears throat> Just calls. card. Tray of hearts. That should ease Karai's mind if he was worried at all. You know, the weak ace always feels much better when it becomes aces up. Oliver keeps firing. Eight million. Oliver emboldened, I guess, by that flush draw on the turn, firing his second barrel. Another call from Aldemir. Almost 33 million in the middle here. River card. Well, that pair is Oliver. But having showdown value might save him some chips here. Well, Spades got there. Aldemir probably content to check call in this spot. Good. Aldemir checks. All right, this separates the empires from the chairs. Will Oliver fire at it again? He does not. Aldemir is good, and he puts more space between himself and the other two. With his skill, you might think main event deep runs are common, but that's just not the case. The first main event I played was in 2014. That was the first time I was here in Vegas. Didn't cash that time, but I cashed my second and third time I played, so 2015 and 16. I, I, I played all of them since 2014, and this is by far the biggest one.
I didn't have a very successful series so far. I actually played the whole series here. Didn't play live poker before for almost two years due to the pandemic. And I was very excited to, to come here and play. And Min cashed a lot of small tournaments, but no success. So the main event was a good one to go deep in. But I had a very, very bad first day, actually. I, I didn't make any hands. And then I had a key hand, I, I want to say. Um, I had a hand where I turned a straight and my opponent three bet me on the turn and I ended up folding my straight and she ended up having a bigger straight so I made a good fold which saved my tournament life and that's not a fold I, I make too often so I'm proud of that. Second day wasn't good either and on the third day I started like making a run and yeah I feel like I, I, I played pretty well this tournament but of course I ran also super super well to, to get to the stage you have to. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Good looking, talented, <laughs> smart, polite, well spoken. Take a hike, pal. <laughs> George Holmes, King, Knight of Diamonds. First to act here, a raise to three million. George Holmes has played quite the main event. Fearless, and he will put chips in at any street. Ace five for Oliver offsuit. The moral of the story at this main event is never give up. Aldemir started day three. 1909th out of 2300 players left. Oliver started day six, 80th out of 96 players left. And George Holmes, of course, one big blind left on day seven. A call. Oliver all in, and Holmes makes the call with the bigger stack. Jack Oliver at risk again. Oliver, a slight favorite to double up. Holmes trying to get us to heads up. Holmes to his rail. Oliver keeps his seat for the moment. Here at the flop, all spades, not good for Holmes, and ace high with the ace of spades makes Oliver a big favorite now. Turn card. Another deuce, Oliver's double up one card away, but so is elimination. For Holmes to bust Oliver, he needs a non-spade, king, or nine. The river card is a king, but the spade. Oliver wins with the flush to double up. Wow. I think Oliver knows he won. Nice hand, Joe. It's a king. This final table king. isn't ready for a heads up quite yet. What? Oliver back in the hunt. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Welcome back to Las Vegas. Almost time to draw the curtain on this year's main event and the Rio. Norman, we're heading for the strip. Expecting big things next summer, perhaps even bigger money than you see there on the payouts brought to you by Cuervo. There are no strangers. 1.3 million between third and second. A lot to play for, of course. Oliver keeping busy, raising with the Queen 8 off suit. Action on Aldemir in the big blind, Jack 9. And he calls for 2.4 million more. Here's the flop. And Oliver flops a monster. Trip Queens. Aldemir checks his 2% hand. In 1990, Brit Mansour Matlubi won the main event, the first non-American to do it, but he was Iranian-born. Hard to believe no British-born players ever won the main event with all their great bracelet winners over the years. Benny Glazer, Barney Boatman, Devilfish Oliot, Chris Mormon, Stephen Chitwick, Max Silver, etc., etc. Bet of $3 million from Oliver with Trip Queens. Oliver tried to become the first Britain native. England third all time in World Series bracelets behind the US and Canada. Germany is fourth. Aldemir putting, wow, a check raise together. Where did that come from? Uh, okay, update me on what's happened, Lon. All right, Oliver flop trips, bet, then Aldemir check raised. Is he trying to just hand the bracelet over to the Brit? No, it's just a misread. Oh, thank goodness. I don't like giving the Brits anything. Just look how they treated us until the revolution. <laughs> Oliver just calls with his monster. Tray of hearts on the turn. Good thing Aldemir bought the mixed 12-pack of masks from Walgreaves, or he would have run out by now. <laughs> Aldemir now checks again, drawing dead. Whoa, whoa, we went from check raise to check? Ha! Wonder Boy is scared. Go after him, Jack. Oliver 
Reaching for the yellows, worth a million each, and a royal purple. That's a total of eight million. Uh, you got nothing, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> there you go, a nice flop, a nice pot. Oliver receives a shot in the arm to keep his hopes afloat. Jack Oliver with quite a ride here at the 2021 main event. Not the most talkative player, but certainly a formidable one. He's been playing poker about 10 years now, and by far this is his biggest success story. He watched World Series reruns on the internet as a teenager. One thing led to another. He probably loved my commentary, and then bang, here he is at his first main event. Yeah, exactly. It's all about you. Aldemir on the button. 245 million chips. There are just 399 million in play. A raise to 3.3 million. Oliver gets out of the way. Holmes with pocket tens. Holmes not superstitious, but he says he's eating some type of egg breakfast every morning and makes sure he wears his lucky Nike cap to the table each day. How much? 3.3. Oh. With a pocket pair, just a call of 1.7 million against the monster chip leader. There's the flop. And there's a king. Aldemir flops big again, stuffing Holmes's pocket tens into the second hand drawer. Aldemir wins flips, and he wins flops. Yeah. He should wear flip-flops. <laughs> Holmes checks to the pre-flop razor. Aldemir and Holmes had not played with each other at this main event until we got down to 10-handed play. So the final table has been their only sample size of each other. That is three million. Aldemir bets three million with the best hand. Holmes can't go anywhere right now. Where would he go? Good point. Makes the call. Nine of diamonds on the turn, both with the same gut shot. Check. Yes. Holmes checks again. The nine of diamonds, one of the Global Poker Awards nominees for least favorite turn card back in 2018. Yeah, it was a close battle. Tray of clubs was in the running. <laughs> Aldemir checks back, maybe a little pot control. Another Jack, two pair for each. Jackson tens for Holmes. Ain't gonna bring the bacon home, or veggie bacon, if that's his dietary uh, <laughs> preference. He's from Atlanta. I don't think they allow veggie bacon down there. You're probably right. Holmes now reaching four million. Aldemir has the action with the best hand. Four million, small value bet or blocker bet or whatever poker analysts call this wager. I assume this is just a call from Aldemir. He's never folding. You realize this is Karai Aldemir. He's got some royal purples in his hands. There is the raise to 15.3 million. Wow. Just another remarkable spot on read by Aldemir. How does he raise there? I just would have called and hoped I was good. Well, Holmes might be sharing your thought process, and I pity him. There is the call. King 10. Good him. How did he get 11 million more chips out of Holmes? Karai Aldemir continues to crush this final table, and it is all going as planned for the German pro. Is this just a matter of time? It really is a show within a show. This is a cash game. These people are going at it for real money. But then this sub layer of, and we get to know why. Before there were three, there were nine at this final table. Chase Bianchi, Jareth East, Alejandro Lococo, the Argentinian rapper, Henry Park, Oscar Sechumish, and the energetic Josh Remedio all out of the main event champion picture. So we are left with three, one of whom will be king. The next three payouts are 3 million, 4.3 million, and 8 million. Jack Oliver, the short stack. All in. Raise all in. What do we know about this kid, Lon? Well, not much, really. I, I don't have anything on the guy. Well, this is a tweener call here for George Holmes. It's a pretty hand. Queen Jack suited, but for more than a third of his stack, I don't know if Queen Jack suited is quite strong enough. If Holmes loses, he'd be the short stack. Yeah, that kind of hand. 
Uh, he does reluctantly make the crying call. Yeah, that was a crying, sighing, moaning call. So Oliver at risk again and again with a better hand. Jack Oliver trying to make history as the first British-born main event champion. Stays at the table and awaits the fate of the board. Oliver has been in this spot before. And there is top pair for Jack, which does not alter Georgia's needs. I would not want to be Jack Oliver's stomach right now. <laughs> the turn card. Everyone on pins and needles here in the Amazon room. And Holmes takes the lead with the Jack. Oliver has five outs now to keep his seat. Gordon Davis wants George Holmes to show Jack Oliver the lights. Oliver has to have an ace or an eight. The river card is a nine, and Jack Oliver is counted out of this main event. Three million dollars for third place for Jack Oliver. Everyone loses their last all in, except the champion, Lon. Deep thoughts by Norman Chad. And now we are heads up. Karai Aldemir and George Holmes for the World Championship. Good luck, bud. This is going to be a fun heads up. He was always there. A steady eddy of this main event was Jack Oliver. He got it in good against Holmes, but got run down. Now for him, it's three million bucks and a chat with our Jeff Platt. Well, Jack, every poker player dreams about going deep in the World Series of Poker main event. What was it like for you to finish in third place in this tournament? Yeah, I mean, I can't complain, can I? There's 6,000 something other people that didn't make it this far, so, like, what have I got to complain about? I think I played well, and that's kind of all that matters, really. Like, that's, that's all you can do in this game, so. Yeah. Three, three million dollars for this third place finish. How will that influence your poker career? How will that change your life? Yeah, it's, of course it's going to change my life in some way. It's, it's a lot of money. Um, but but it, it, as much as it is about the money, it's kind of not like uh, play poker for the love of the game. So we'll continue to do so and yeah, hopefully play a lot more poker in the years to come. And finally, Jack, I know your girlfriend, Laura, flew in last minute. You had a boisterous rail. What was that kind of support like? No, it was amazing. I mean, Everyone dreams for the rail, and there was a great rail, and we got some great videos, so and some great moments, and that's what we can ask for. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's been amazing. Congratulations on a great run. Thank, Thank you for the time. Appreciate Thanks, it. Mate. Well done, Jack Oliver. And now the consummate pro versus the home game hero, Aldemir and Holmes. Heads up for the main event title next. The money is on the table, the bracelet is on the table, the champion is at the table. Payouts on the left brought to you by Cuervo. There are no strangers. 3.7 million between first and second. It's what we dream about sometimes, Joes versus pros. Can the home game guy overcome the experienced, decorated chip leader heads up to win the world title? Aldemir opening the action with seven tray of hearts with a raise. Holmes now with five deuce. Okay, Norman heads up. It's all about every hand being a hand. Karai Aldemir, meet George Holmes. Rec player, banking guy, and maybe the most dangerous heads up opponent you could have drawn from this final table. A three bet to nine million. I remember Holmes, not just a home game guy, he was down to one big blind. What an epic comeback. Uh, no way he's folding. If George wants to play big pots, that's just fine with the German pro. And they've mm. already built a pot of 20 million. I mean, seven, three raises, five deuce re-raises, seven, three calls? Is nothing sacred anymore? Amazingly, Karai, best pre-flop, best post-flop with a pair of threes. George with a gut shot. In 1982, there was legendary Jack Strauss winning the main event with a chip in a chair. In 2012, Greg Merson had two blinds with about 150 players left. And now in 2021, George Holmes was down to one blind with 25 players left. Holmes with the now popular one-quarter pot bet of five million. 
Well, it's hard to make a pair, according to Antonio Esfandiari. Sadly, that line is his legacy. So, of course, Aldemir is continuing here. Holmes pairs up as if he needed more gumption to move his chips. Holmes played the main event in 2019 for the first time, finished 213th, great showing, hard to top. Well, he's topped it in his second main event. Boy, did he ever. And now emboldened with his pair, bets 13 million. Of course he was gonna fire again when he made a pair. Nothing revolutionary from Aldemir to get to this point. Solid, steady poker, solid reads. Plus he's been running extraordinarily well. 13 million from him. 56 million in the middle. Rivercard brings the ace of diamonds. An ace is rarely not scary. The ace does get there, the flush gets there. This is a Pepto Bismol board. That's a Roll Aid's hand. Who can stomach this? The beauty of heads up. Every action is so important, and Holmes is bringing it 40 million with the fastball. That's a big bet, That's Lon. a big bet. Yeah. And it sheds Aldemir. George's wife, Felicia, braving the raucous rail. Most of Aldemir's ship lead is gone. Jeff Platt is on that rail with George's wife. Well, Felicia, what is this like for you to watch George heads up for the World Series of Poker main event title? Uh, I'm going to have to use his words of surreal. Uh, it's definitely a dream. <laughs> how would you describe his passion for poker and how it's developed over the years? Um, you know, we were just talking about that last night and remembering when he started playing and probably the late 90s. And I remember him going out once a week to play poker and sometimes a couple more times and occasionally casinos and things like that. But this is the first time I've ever seen him play. What do you think it would mean to him to win this tournament? The world. <laughs> And finally, what do you think of these crazy birds next to you? <laughs> they are, I mean, the wind beneath his wings, okay? When I say entourage, this is this is it. This is who you want behind you. Love that. Thanks so much for the time, Coach Festival. Holmes with pocket sevens just had Aldemir raise it up with nine eight of hearts. Aldemir's lead only 14 million to start this hand. And here is the flop. Come on, sevens, a whole bunch of them for Holmes. Lon, if you were to flop a set every time it heads up, what are the chances you would win? 50-50? Correct. I believe that you, and I'm talking about you, would have about a 50% chance of winning a heads up by flopping a set on every hand. Norman, what are the chances that we'll be working together after this final table? Oh, man, 50-50 at best. Exactly. Holmes checked his set. Aldemir putting chips in the middle, as he loves to do. 3.4 million. Well, he's required to uh, continue there via the GTO treaties of 2016. Also known as Poker Code. Holmes with the hammer just makes the call. Another king giving Holmes a full house. This one's over, Lon. Another check from George. Holmes check calls a lot when he's got it and keeps betting when he doesn't. By the way, Aldemir is allowed to slow down here with Squad Douche. I don't think he'll be uh, tossed from the GTO High Society Club. Ah, uh, he does indeed check. Nine on the river. Aldemir pairs up. Might cost him. Well, okay, so Flush got there, Straight got there, but of course Holmes really not concerned because he's got a full house. Some yellow, some royal purple, half pot, nine million from Holmes here. You mentioned Aldemir paired that nine on the river, but Holmes firing again onto this board. I don't think Karai can call here. Aldemir is going to look him up. And Holmes does it again. 
Oh boy, from one big blind on day seven to the chip lead heads up at the main event. What a story. George Holmes continues to write. His opponent had been chip leader since there were 20 players left, but now in this two horse town, we've got a brand new sheriff. River card now. Holmes covers Oliver, but not by much. He's got one blind left plus change. Taxi! It seems like forever ago that George Holmes was all but out, but it was just two days ago. He sits on the doorstep of history now, possibly completing his own chip in a chair to a championship saga. Big hands dealt. Holmes with ace-queen suited. Aldemir, ace-king of spades. He bet three million, and Holmes matches that. Turn card now is a queen. Aldemir lands his straight. Queen's up. Not good enough for Holmes. He's still fishing. Are they playing short deck now? Right. And man, this is a dangerous card for Holmes. Aldemir makes Broadway. Aldemir trying to become the third German main event champ of the last decade. P.S. Hines in 2011. Hussein and San in 2019. After the Holmes check, Aldemir bets 12.4 million. I said, Holmes paired his queen. He has a straight draw. He has a flush draw. He has a royal flush draw. I, I don't know about Atlanta, but in Silver Spring, Maryland, we never fold a royal flush draw. George is not folding. Calling there, 42 million in the middle. River card. And that is a blankety blank, blank, blank. I don't know if the seven of spades on the river never helps any hand anytime, <laughs> anywhere, but it sure is one ugly sight for George Holmes. Holmes checks again. Aldemir was on Hossein and San's rail two years ago when he won at the main event. George Holmes rail hoping for something to cheer about. And now Aldemir thinking about what Holmes might call. Uh-oh. Lots of royal purple. Hefty, hefty, hefty. 36 million. Aldemir goes big with Broadway. Holmes is left off Broadway with his hand. A lot of chips in the middle. 78 million. A lot of cash on the table, and he gives up the hand and gives up his chip lead with it. He shows the big laydown. Karai Aldemir back in control of this heads up battle. Far from an accident that Karai Aldemir is at this final table. He's been a high-rolling tournament player for nearly a decade, part of a strong German contingent that lives and breathes poker. Aldemir among the very best at his craft. Aldemir really got rolling in 2016. First, he was second in a World Series event for 250K. Then he was third behind Fader Holtz and Dan Smith in the little one for one drop for 2.1 million. And then he won the Triton Series title in Manila for 1.3 million. An ace for both. Again, Karai with ace king again. Holmes min raised to four million with the ace eight of hearts. Aldemir with the ace king. Three bets to 17 million. Heads up, not for the weak of heart. Three bets are common, so you must defend widely. Holmes makes the call. These two know how to build big pots. And the flop. Top pair for each. Only one heart for George Holmes this time. Fader Holtz was the one who told Aldemir a number of years ago, you should play bigger buy-ins. You'll be a winning player. And I've got to tell you, if Fader Holtz is part of your poker crew, you've got a good crew no matter who else is in there. Aldemir, a more than four to one favorite here with his ace king, bets 10 million. Despite how deep they are, this is the kind of flop where stacks could go in. Holmes might not be as careful in this type of spot as Aldemir would be. Ah, uh, got the big chips in hand. Maybe thinking he's got the only ace in the house here. 
There is a raise from Holmes to 28 million. And Holmes treading thin here as this pot swells. But George keeping Karai off balance. It's hard to get steady footing against the amateur. All the studying they do at the high levels of the poker world are mostly intended for playing against similarly skilled players. When you're up against somebody like George Holmes, as you mentioned, Norman, Aldemir might be a little more unsure. He does make the call. That should send some sort of signal to George Holmes. Aldemir checks. Pumping the brakes on this pot now. Check back. River card now is the eight of spades, and Holmes finding a little river magic. Yeah, Holmes gets lucky. His rail's been waiting for a reason to erupt. They're going to get one. Aldemir bet the flop, checked the turn. And now when Holmes hits his card, Aldemir will test him. Just nine million, though. Nine million? Wow. What solver spit out that number in this spot? It, it just feels weak. 10% of the pot now is bet by Aldemir. I'm not sure George is going to stand for this. Yeah, with aces up, a raise to 24 million. Yeah, Holmes tells Aldemir, the kitty game is down the street, pal. You insult me with your 9 million chip Sesame Street bet. You think it's tough to be a player. Imagine being somebody supporting the player. <laughs> the Rails are having a moment, and Aldemir pays him off. Ah, back on top, baby. George Holmes. Holmes raised every chance he got and then got there. Perfect poker strategy. Holmes is rail with more to cheer about now as their man is back in the chip lead. 230 million chips. For Karai Aldemir, everything had gone right for so long. Perhaps it was bound to change. A brutal eight gives Holmes the main event chip lead once again. What a battle. The championship gold bracelet waiting for an owner worth more than 500,000 on its own. The cherry on top of an $8 million payday. There is Georgia's GPI, the Hindemob bio board. This poker thing just might allow a bit more time for the fishing thing. Holmes' buddy Gordon Davis half jokingly says George might be the worst player at their home game. Holmes responds, quote, Gordon knows the truth of the home game. Gordon's the epitome of the saying, if you don't recognize the fish at the table, it probably is you, end quote. Holmes raising with King six. Statistically, that hand will be a head. Heads up pre-flop with eight, six. Aldemir calls from the big blind. Eight, five, seven. Both flop open ended. Aldemir with top pair to boot. He checks. Holmes is on the edge of a legend, down to one big blind with 25 players left. And if he wins this thing, that could fuel a home game pilgrimage to the main event. Mm -hmm. 5.4 million from the pre-flop raiser. Uh, they'll be coming from everywhere, Lana, Poughkeepsie, Kalamazoo, Peoria, Lubbock, Bakersfield, Bar Harbor, Coeur d'Alene, Fairbanks, Gulfport, Eugene, Allentown. Will you stop me? I, I don't know every city in the country. <laughs> Aldemir calls for 5.4 million. A shout out to Poughkeepsie. Trey of diamonds on the turn is not going to impress anyone. Bar Harbor. Ah, Bar Harbor, Maine. Check, check. Another three, giving Karai two pair and busted straight draws for both. Holmes started this hand with a three to two chip advantage. There have been two waves of great young German players in the last 15 years, and Aldemir was just getting started in the game when the first wave arrived. Aldemir putting chips together now. Kind of a tweener bet, not big, not small, 7.8 million. Aldemir targeting a hand like pocket fours or maybe a random five or a big ace. Well, he's got the best hand, but Holmes again has the royal purples being stacked in front of him. 
Who is this guy? A raise to 38 million. Right. How does a home game rec player have a river raise like that within him? A George Holmes is a beast in, inside of a titan, inside of a hellion, inside of a monster, inside of a rapscallion. What a raise. Both rails thinking what Aldemir is thinking. Why would he do that? Yeah, Aldemir befuddled. And this play by Holmes, shades of Moneymaker versus Farha in 03, when Chris pushed all in on a bluff, and Farha had the best hand and couldn't figure it out and ended up folding. Good call. But Karai is up to the task. A huge moment for Aldemir to be wrong there. Puts him at a big chip disadvantage. Holmes tried to fool the best, but the best got the better of him. What a final table this has been. Great raise by George. Better call by Aldemir. Karai back in the chip lead. Chip stacks pretty even. The players are still about 100 big blinds deep. A very fair and fun fight so far. Holmes on the button and the small blind. King Queen raised to 6 million. Aldemir 10 7 of diamonds. We allow no pros in my home game, so Aldemir is out. But as I have said many, many times in the past week, George Holmes is doubly out, and he's a credit card processing and services business guy. 14 and a half million in the middle. Aldemir's had all he can handle. And there's a seven and a 10. Aldemir flops top two, and he quickly checks. That's a pretty good flop for 10-7. Yeah, pretty uh, good. There are better flops, but this feels like top five, maybe top three. <laughs> so Holmes is going to continue. Has to continue here, six million. I don't know if he has to continue, but he's got no quit in him. Though I think most folks would just take a free turn card here with King-Queen. One reason you raise pre-flop is to protect your hand, but and heads up, all bets are off and all bets are on. Aldemir now with two pair and the check raised to 19 million. Yeah, Aldemir protecting his hand against any draws Holmes might have. Now, most humans would probably lay this down facing that check raise, but George Holmes is not most humans. Heck, he might three bet it here. We've seen him speed right through stop signs before. And he does make the call. <laughs> George being George. Turn card is a king for Holmes. His lot is improved, but he's still way behind. No, it cost George 19 million chips to see that card, and he's still behind. Aldemir now with the action. He checked the flop. He's not checking here. Hoping George has a piece of that board. 36 and a half million. Aldemir betting more than two thirds of the pot and it gets serious now for George Holmes. More than a four to one underdog is Holmes right now. He's gonna make this call Norman. Gulp from Aldemir as the chips go in for the call. The pot has swelled to over 125 million. River card, the nine of clubs, a safe card for Aldemir. His two pair are best. Aldemir just took another gulp. And I just think he's gonna wanna take one more deep dive here with two pair. Does check a bit more than a pot size bet left in each player's stack. I imagine Holmes with top pair might be content to check behind here. All in. Whoa! George Holmes wants to play for it all. This might be it. This might be it. Don't know if he's bluffing or if Holmes thinks he has the best of it. Never saw it coming. If this were a weekend tournament in Hammond, Indiana, I, I think this is a call nine times out of ten from Aldemir, but you can see his distress. Holmes didn't like what he just heard from Aldemir with this might be it. To borrow from Scotty Wynn in 1998, if Karai calls, it's all over, baby. 
He oh, does yeah. make the call. Home shows the king, and Karai Aldemir puts his signature on this main event masterpiece. Karai Aldemir started the final table with the most chips. He ended it with all the chips, and there was no stopping him. For George Holmes, from almost certain elimination, to very nearly becoming the world champion. For Aldemir, a pristine run through a huge field to become the main event champion. We have seen a wave of great German players over the past decade, and Karai Aldemir shows he is worthy of the best of them. Well played, now. A look at the final results brought to you by Caesar Sportsbook. Karai Aldemir, the $8 million man. Holmes, with such an impressive performance, wins $4.3 million. That home game is going to seem small now. Jeff Platt is with our final two. What an absolute battle, Corey. Congratulations. I'm going to get to you in just a minute. George, from one big blind on day seven to a second place finish in the World Series of Poker main event, how would you sum up? your experience here? Um, unbelievable. I still can't put it into words. I mean, maybe a week from now I'll be able to tell you how I feel, but it's been, uh, it's been grueling week and a half. This guy was amazing, tough all night. Um, that's about it. Good game. Well played. Congratulations on a great run. I Thank hope you. we see more of you Thank in you. the future. Corey Aldemir, you've just won the 2021 World Series of Poker main event. What does this title mean to you? Yeah, I mean a lot as you can tell. Um, yeah, it's just the dream of every poker player, I want to say. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. It's, it's it, yeah, it, it feels great. I mean, George was so tough, so tough to play against him. He played really, really well. So I'm very happy that I could, that I could beat him. You ready for the fun part now? <laughs> yeah, I guess I need a few minutes, but after <laughs> okay. that, yeah. Well, uh, to present the World Series of Poker main event bracelet to you, here is World Series of Poker Vice President Jack Effel. Jack, take it away. Unbelievable, Karai. You played unbelievable. What an accomplishment. You know, almost two weeks worth of play. You made it. Here you are, the 2021 main event champion. On behalf of Caesars Digital and the World Series of Poker and our friends at Jostens, I'd like to present you with the main event bracelet. Congratulations, my friend. Hold it up so we can see it. In a year when the main event was in doubt, the main event delivered. Karai Aldemir, a most worthy champion. George Holmes, a most worthy opponent. A final table that had it all, won by the most deserving player of them all. Karai Aldemir, you are a world champion. For Norman Chad and Jeff Platt, I'm Lon McCarran. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.